YouTubers, bit shooters, Patreon, welcome. Mike Martin's here with the Mike Martin's channel. Anyways, um, somebody was asking me about um, what to look at in the markets. What exactly should we be looking at in the markets to indicate a housing crash? Or what specific pivotal points do we need to be looking at? Well, it's complicated, okay? Because we are living at a time, or we're living at times, where we've never had so much Mickey Mousing and so much money laundering and so much pent up and creating artificial bubbles. We've never had so much in human history um, in, in the entire Commonwealth. New Zealand, Australia, um, the UK, Canada, and pretty much the entire west coast of the United States. Uh, foreign investing has been a big deal. And countries like Canada, all these Commonwealth countries, are competing for which rich, which rich, wealthy investors. And that's, that's what's been happening, guys. So what's been happening in the last five, six, seven years is that. And what's happened is it's created a shortage of housing. And it's driven up and inflated assets into severe bubble territory. Why haven't we had a crash or correction? Well, it's simple. We haven't had a crash or correction in a long time because of the underlying magic hocus pocus smoke and mirrors by the federal governments, right? Uh, you got a lot of boomers that became wealthy overnight and a lot of uh, people that bought at the right time that literally became wealthy overnight on paper. But then you got those generations that keep moving forward okay so we're eight years into this mess okay give it another 10 more years you're going to start seeing people that were 13 years old at the beginning of this housing mess in 10 years they're going to be 23 a lot of people did jump into the market at those times but now it looks like it's going to be another 10 more years 33 well that doesn't fit you know if you want to live in one of the big cities in canada and and australia I think that's not long enough to put a down payment now. you got to work at least 30, 40 years to put a down payment on a house <clears throat> for the Australian proper, Canadian proper, uh, you know, UK proper. And I've been, and a lot of people are like, oh, why are you so overly infatuated with Australia? I, we, I've been covering Australia for, I don't know, seven, eight years now because I, I honestly believe that uh, Australia is the domino. It's the... The first movement in this domino effect that's going to bring down everything. Now, so housing is tough to, to determine, you know. Uh, I know the capital flows from China have been next to nothing. Now with China's new social credit score and tracking every cent that leaves that shore, you're going to start seeing a lot of, a lot of stagnation and a lot of oversupply in these housing markets, right? So, okay, now let's talk about the markets now, right? The markets and the bond and stock market, okay? Derivative, futures market, all that stuff, okay? Now, how do we get an indication or how have we historically used or what did we use to historically give us an indicator? It's the bond market. The biggest bond market in the world is the American bond market. The American bond market makes up about, I think, this is, just don't quote me on this because it's been a while, 39 to 41% of the existing bond market in the world, the United States has the biggest bond market. The bond market consists of um, debt, trading debt, uh, bills, and uh, all kinds of other stuff, and IOUs, if you want to call them that. I call I like calling them that because that's what they mean. And... Um, now, someone's asked me, okay, uh, Mike, um, okay, let, let me just take one step back. Uh, the bond market is a good way because when you have an inverted yield curve, which we covered here on this channel quite a few times over the last couple of years, uh, it starts to show that the three-year bond starts paying out more than the 10-year. So basically, you would think the, more, the, longer I, the longer I put my money away, the better return I get after X amount of time, right? No, once the yield once the yield curve starts to invert, it starts crippling that and 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 actually making the three year bond and the two year look a lot more attractive 
to investors. Now, okay, so what's going on? Well, how is the bond market? So can the U.S. bond market become like Japan and Germany going to zero? Yes, but it will take a very long time. And let me tell you why. Let me tell you what's penting up the bond market so you guys understand this now. The bond market's being pent up or pented up or by European investors and Japanese investors putting their money in the U.S. bond market. So, so much money is coming from overseas into the American bond markets just to see and people are keeping a close watch on that one. Not to mention that in 2018, 2017, was it 2017? Don't quote me on this either, right? But 2017, the bond market 10 year was going at about 39 to 4.2%. Okay. As of last week here, now in 2019, it's fluctuating at 1.9%. So who's going to throw money? Okay. Who's going to throw money um, into something that's going to give them back less money once you, once you hedge it against inflation, you're realizing you're losing money. So I kind of wanted to throw that out there. I wanted to kind of throw the bond market out there. Now, what's America going to do? Well, America could, could sit tight just for a little while longer and keep this going because of the money that's being flooded in overseas that's penting up the American bond market. Remember, it makes up 39 to 41% of the world's bond markets, right? But right now, it ain't sitting pretty. Um... I think people are still buying American debt. I still, I still think that there's, there's, there's hope out there, and to, you know, there's hope to keep this going. But for how long? You know, how long can we keep this going? How long does the next generation have to kind of, uh, kind of sit, retreat themselves and saying, "Well, it looks like I can never afford to buy a house, even though I'm working two full time jobs and my wife works a full time job." You know, oh, well, it looks like I'm not going to have kids because we don't have nowhere to settle and lay roots. How much longer is that going to go on and cripple us? Cripple who we are and cripple what we made these countries into. And now we're seeing the, 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 the downward effect, but we are keeping it up. So it's like keeping, keeping a... a, a a dead body on, on life support and keeping it going just for the sake of keeping it going. You know, there's no more reason to keep it going, right? So I want to know what you guys think. The housing market, there's oversupply in every market, right from Sydney to Melbourne, uh, across, the, across the pond there to New Zealand, to Auckland, uh, to Welland and, and Christchurch. There's just a massive oversupply everywhere. Uh, you go out uh, north, uh, nor way north, uh, north and then head west. To London, same thing. You got Middle England, everyone moving to Middle England from London because they can't afford to live in the bigger cities in the UK. You got people in Ireland, in Dublin that are protesting on the streets because so many people sleeping rough and people paying um, 200 euros a week to sleep on a couch. People renting out tents, tents in Vancouver, BC, labeling them as a one bedroom apartment, one bath. I did a video about that too. Oversupply. Oversupply is crippling, and now we're going to start seeing the side effects on what's happening, on what's going to happen. I want to know what you guys think in the comments below. I really want to know what you guys feel about this. I kind of want to, um, you know, the markets, we'll keep an eye on the bond market. We know it's not looking good right now from where it was last year. And the feds are going to, are, 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 are obviously going to be lowering rates to keep this going for longer. And in turn, Canada and Australia and New Zealand, New Z Australia already did, but they're going to start lowering rates even further to keep uh, to keep this bubble inflating. And once that black swan swoops in, that's when things start taking a change for the best. The best in a way where things could start normalizing again. And countries could stop competing for rich investors and start taking care of their own people. Guys, Mike Martin's here. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. I'd like to know. Thanks for watching. I appreciate it. And I appreciate you guys taking the time to uh, to watch this video. And uh, if you want to support this transmission, go ahead and uh, buy me a coffee on Patreon. Thanks for watching. Let me know. I'd like to know.